Farms.com Market School with expert commodity analyst Mo Agostino is an online educational video series designed to help you, the farmer, improve your knowledge of grain marketing. Farms.com Market School is brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds. DeKalb, growing confidence. Today's video is about USDA crop reports. These reports include the monthly WASDE, W-A-S-D-E, which stands for World Agriculture Supply and Demand Estimates Report, quarterly grain stocks report, March planting, June acreage, baseline projections, ag outlook form, and finally the weekly crop progress reports. So today's topics include the release dates and where to find these USDA crop reports. And then secondly, we're gonna look at what numbers to focus your attention on with examples using corn and soybeans. Our first topic today is about release dates and where to find all the important USDA reports, the most important one being the monthly WASDE USDA report. To find the USDA monthly crop production report, just open up a, a Google web browser, type in USDA WASDE report, and the first link that pops up, just click on that. I've provided you the link. So this is the USDA website. You can see if you scroll down, all the release dates are there. You can click on the latest monthly report in PDF, XML, or Excel formats. The report is released at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. So if it's January and the report date, release date is January 10th, that report will re be released at noon p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, once you pull up the PDF file, the USDA will start to talk about the supply demand, current supply demand situation on wheat, followed by soybeans, uh, coarse grain, which includes corn, sorghum, and eventually followed by sugar and livestock. Another report to watch is the USDA baseline projections report. This report typically comes out in the middle of February of any given year. And the USDA is just making assumptions about the future. It's basically an outlook on grains, livestock, US economy, global economy, it takes you out to about 20 years out into the future. Be careful what, what you read in this report. It's just assumptions about the future. Anybody can apply a particular assumption to uh, um, grains and, and uh, project forward. Another report to watch is the USDA Ag Outlook Forum report, which comes out around the end of February, February 20th to 21st. This is where the USDA gives you a first sneak peek of the current marketing year. So if it was 2014, it would be a projection of your 14-15 marketing year. And the USDA gives you a first glimpse at total acres for corn, beans, wheat, average yields, and of course demand and ending stocks and in this report the USDA is famous for providing big numbers big average yields big acres big ending stocks so be careful there because you still got to get it planted and then you got to throw weather at it so not necessarily what's going to happen the fall or winter of that following year once harvest is complete but give you some idea where they're going with the numbers Another market moving report is the USDA quarterly grain stocks report, which comes out quarterly versus the WASDE report, which comes out monthly. In this report, the USDA gives you projections of the movement of grain, both on farm and off farm storage. In other words, how many bushels are left with the commercials versus the farmer? Did demand chew up a lot more bushels or did it leave too many on farm storage? And typically, if the USDA finds a lot more bushels, the market tends to fall dramatically. You can get limit moves to the downside and vice versa. The USDA March Planning Intentions Report comes out on March 31st. It's your first glimpse at the total acres that the US farmer plans on planting in the United States, whether it's corn, beans, wheat, canola, and so on and so forth. This gives USDA an indication of the total acres so that in May, in their May USDA WASDE report, they can apply those acres to yield and supply demand and come out with a new ending stocks number. USDA weekly crop progress reports come out weekly. They start from April 1st and go th right through November 25th any given year. These reports are weekly and the USDA initially at the beginning gives you reports as to how much of the corn is being planted, how fast compares it to the previous year and the five year average, but you're also looking for the crop conditions. How is corn shaping up in the good to excellent category versus the poor to very poor, whether it's corn, beans, or wheat. That's critical. That can send an indication to the markets that maybe we need to drive prices higher to ration demand or vice versa. 
The USDA June acreage report comes out around the end of June, June 30th, any given year. And this report is an update to the March planning intentions report on March 31st. The USDA gives you an update as to whether the farmers got all those acres planted that they suggested March 31st, or were there some acres maybe not planted because it was too wet. Um, and typically this report can show a difference of two to three million acres between the June acreage report and the March planting intentions report. Our second topic today is about USDA numbers, which numbers to focus on, and we're going to use examples with corn and soybeans to illustrate what to focus on. So let's start off with our corn example. To view the USDA corn balance sheet, you just have to open up that PDF file within that USDA website. You scroll down until you see the US feed, grain, and corn supply in use. And there's a table there that shows you both the supply and demand numbers. If there's only one number to focus on, it is the ending stocks number that will drive prices higher and lower. And I'll explain here in a second why. An understanding of the past is critical to knowing what is possible in the future. So what I'm trying to get at here is you have to understand what the USDA is famous for doing. In 1995-96 drought, U.S. corn ending stocks hit a low of 317 million bushels and the stocks to use ratio went down to 4.5%. Corn futures in that year peaked at 545 per bushel. So again, when you get very tight ending stocks, prices tend to rise. In 2008, when corn futures peaked at a record US 765 a bushel, corn ending stocks dropped to a low of 673 million bushels, a stocks to use ratio of 5.4%, similar to 95-96, just slightly higher than that. In January of 2009, ending stocks had swelled to 1.709 billion bushels. You start to get to 1.72 billion bushels, and guess what? The price is going to start to drop. The price of corn dropped by as much as 4.65 a bushel to $3 a bushel, stocks to use ratio of 15%. So you're starting to get the drift here, the trend. You get down to a 5% stocks to use ratio, price is going to head higher. 15% stocks to use ratio, price is going to head lower. In 2011, corn futures for July peaked at US 738 and three quarters a bushel with corn ending stocks at a low of 675 million bushels. A stocks to use ratio of 5%. Here's that 5% again, and guess what? Futures took off, went to record highs. Just above the 1937 Great Depression stocks to use ratio of 4.5. It was 1995-96 that got down to that 4.5. In the summer of 2012, corn futures peaked at 849 a bushel after a severe drought that cut corn yields down to 122.8 bushels per acre, taking ending stocks down to 733 million bushels. Again, wasn't as low as uh, the 673 or the 317, going all the way back to 95, 96, but the stocks use ratio still dropped to 5.5%. Supply and demand like food, feed, ethanol, exports are ultimately what drives ending stocks. Exports get a lot of press and attention, but are still only a small piece of the pie. 1.5 to 2 billion bushels, or 11 to 12 percent. Feed and ethanol represent as much as 70 percent of the total supply usage. Ethanol has gone from 1.3 billion bushels in 0405 to 5 billion bushels in 1314. So bottom line, when ending stocks are historically very low and that stocks to yeast ratio drops to that 4.5 or 5 percent, it's time to be an aggressive seller of grains, not only for the current crop, but maybe looking out one or two years, depending on how low those ending stocks came in at and how high prices have achieved. Our second example today is using soybeans. To view the USDA soybean balance sheet, again, you open up that PDF file within the USDA website, and you scroll down about halfway down that report, and you'll see a section that's called US soybeans and product supply and use. In 0708, soybean ending stocks hit a low of 125 million bushels in a stocks to use ratio of 4.1. There's that low stocks to use ratio of below 5%, 4% in this case. Soybean futures peaked at a record US 1663 per bushel. The 30 year low in soybean stocks to use ratio was 1.1% 1 .1 in June of 1979. Soybean ending stocks in 1011 hit a low of 140 million bushels and a stocks to use ratio of again 4.2%. Can you see a trend? It doesn't look like the USDA likes to print anything below that 100 million bushels in ending stocks for US soybeans. Soybean ending stocks in 1213 hit a low of 115, again above that 100 million bushels. Soybean futures hit an all-time record high of 1789 per bushel, a stocks to use ratio of 4.2%. In summary, the USDA reports are very important as they can have a huge impact on the future direction of grain prices. There are many private forecasters that project forward, but the only game in town that counts is the USDA. 
Whether you agree or disagree with the numbers, it doesn't matter. The markets will trade the USDA numbers at the end of the day. So try to learn to anticipate what the USDA will do and how the markets will react. Learning to play this game better will make you a better marketer. Once the USDA starts to lower ending stocks, the trend is that smaller crops get smaller and larger crops get bigger and vice versa. Knowing what, when, and how to look for these USDA reports and getting some idea of past trends can help a farmer become a more successful marketer. It's never perfect, but the better you are at forecasting USDA reports, the better you will be at marketing your grain.